All right, hello everyone. This is Crazy, and I'm here with JQuest. Hey, hey, what's going on? All right, so in the bottom left we have the red team. Uh, this is Pharaohs, correct? With Windu. Right. So we yes. have uh, General X opening range rockets. User disconnected as a from frigate. your channel. We have Windu uh, going four three Colossus. Jeebus uh, Christ going Plague as an Overlord. Merce going Imp. Vic Guns going Feedback, and Extreme JPR going uh, Transmutation, or whatever the hell it's called, I don't even remember anymore. Alright, uh, <laughs> what do we have on the, the blue team? Alright, the blue team, Salvos, it looks like uh, Helveticus went with the standard uh, range build, one missile count, one missile, OV, opened up Plague, standard, Honda, opened uh, standard build with, you know what, he doesn't have a... Uh, Metamorphosis, constant mutation. Interesting. Uh, Colo's open standard 4-3 uh, build, and Havoc, the uh, Dusty, went uh, charge open. Looks like the Salvo team is starting open with a, uh, a three tank open, see if they can get a little bit of push. So there's no rules in this tournament, right? There, I, I remember there was an uh, attempt in one tournament to try to reduce three tank maximum. That's not the case here, correct? Right, the only, the only rule here is no double colo that is the only rule because it's pretty op early game for for pushing and if you get that early push for containment then you know that kind of kills the the competition factor but there is uh the opportunity to go ahead with three tanks i'm surprised they, they got three tanks right now and they're just just holding the cloud uh, i guess they're just waiting for the plagues to sit in before they push yeah i mean uh i guess they don't want to eat too many plagues from the enemy team either i, I thought it was interesting that Helveticano has been really kind of gravitating more toward the mid and not so much taking out the creeps up along the top. I think he's getting at least some of them, but uh, in terms of generating a farm advantage, I think more of the advantage is sided toward Kanda. I don't know, actually, Helveticano is actually ahead on farm. Interesting. Coming back and still too shutting on farm, so nothing real. It looks like everybody's just kind of just doing a farm push right now until see they can See whatever plagues or see someone gets out. Looks like the Raven right now is out of getting uh, beat up with some of the missiles there from General. He's going back a little bit. So, Nothing significant on the bottom. Yeah. So this, now, this open tournament structure uh, means yes. that there's already been some games. Uh, are you. Correct. So, how exactly do the standings work? Is it. Oh, the way it happens is now is the the top 16 teams uh, have to qualify for uh, the actual group play event. So, but right now there's only 15. So pretty much everybody will make it into the actual group play group play. Oh, there's a push in the middle right now. Yeah. Uh, looks like they're going for window right now. They see if they're going to get any kind of support. There's no energy on the Raven. Yeah, they, and they, no they one, can't get a kill here, but this is going to give yeah. them. A, this is going to help them solidify their hundred farm advantage. I'm not sure if they'll have oh, to go definitely. back after this, though, because Havoc is so low and he's already plagued. If he starts burning, I think they have to go back. Oh, no, he's yep. just above burning rate. Ooh, Helveticano is pretty low, too. General X is like, can I go for it? But no, he cannot. Not yet. Uh, but back to the, the group, uh, the qualifier stage, what happens is everybody, uh, they play for points. No one really gets eliminated. So whether you GG out, it's based on how many kills. I mean, you're still effectively so eliminated if you lose every game. Oh, since, you're still but you're no, you're still not because there's only 15 teams for a 16-team tournament. Yes, I see. correct. So I could make my own team, and I would technically qualify even if I lost every match because I was just my own ship. Correct. So um, in, in this situation right here, everybody's get you know the more points, the higher in seeding. Now, when you get to the group play, depending on what seed you are, will determine which bracket you go in. So, for example, if you're the, the number one team goes to group A. But the other three teams in that group would be, because uh, there's four teams per group, would be number eight, number nine, and number 16. Mm -hmm. So in this case, uh, number, there is no number 16 team, so they get a, a bye. But they do a round-robin play, and the top two teams, the winner and the runner-up from each of the group play, actually goes to the playoff bracket. But again, the group play is still based on points. Uh, of course, wins are a little more important than losses. But so... It, from that, uh, after you advance from the group play, uh, go into the actual bracket tournament. So with uh, the four groups, top two from each, so that gets eight 
teams get to go to uh, bracket play. And once you get to bracket play, there are no more points or nothing. Especially, it's uh, best two out of three. So you get to, and that goes uh, one round each week. And they have the opportunity to play, uh, you know, the captains will schedule the games and, and go from there. So it's all it's all temporarily determined by the captains in terms of when they play, even the uh, the final matches. Uh, yes, a lot of it's just to give the opportunity. It's to get more involvement in. Uh, so if, if the captains are getting more involved in scheduling their teams out, the communication, the uh, be able to set up, we have a tendency to get more buy-in. And right now, with the, all the captains setting all the teams up, we're actually getting a lot of gameplay, which is uh, one of the things that we wanted to try to promote. So if the more people get involved, the more people getting scheduled the games, uh, the, the more activity. I mean, just almost like just within the last week or so. Get on during prime time. You're looking at 50, 60, 70 people playing Star Battle. Nice. So it's 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 working. That's awesome. We'll just see how long it lasts. Yeah. So we'll see how long it lasts. Uh, but back so, to the so, middle. So, so the main structure of the tournament is that the last week last weekend was kind of the the first round of this preliminary stage, and then this is still the preliminary stage. And then right. when 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 do you actually plan for the uh, the final matches to be? Um, we're looking at the first three uh, weeks of uh, this tournament is qualification, just because it's it's round robin. Mm -hmm. So every team gets to play everybody to, to accumulate points to to figure out where their seating is. Okay. So if you can play, great. If you can't, uh, we gave three weeks. It just gives enough time because there's just so many teams, uh, so many different continents, countries, time zones. It's it's just going to be difficult to try to accomplish it in one day. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, we would always have the tournament like one day, one or two days, and then you know if you had a player like one of your studs was you know gone for the, that weekend for you know for life, um, that person didn't get a chance the opportunity to play. By doing it this way, teams can work during the week, you know, on the weekends if they're if they're busy, or so it, it gives a lot of the the, the flexibility and right, just on, you know we got we got wind ooh. getting low here, but ooh. it's not going to be a a kill. Oh right? look at that! But havoc is so low. That if they that, had and a, their colo. Yeah, yeah. If if ha if General X had a, a had a torp here, a torp. this would have <laughs> been really really tight. But it doesn't look like there's enough burst damage here. There's no storm. There's no side blast. So we're still kind of early enough that I don't think we're gonna we're gonna see that. But it seems um, like there's a very the blue team is very aggressive here. That's yes, selling. they are. They're trying to maintain their farm lead, but. The question is, is now that they've actually sat out and farmed for a while, whether they're going to come back and they're going to try to set something crazy up, or are they going to go ahead and uh, come, uh, do a slow push out? Well, Havetakano has already kind of set himself up for rockets, but with the uh, the quick reload. So I don't think he's going to... He could afford a torp, but I don't think he's going to get it. I think he's going to dump everything into rockets. Let's see what he does. Like the only one that has warp right now yep. is the uh, the Colo. Oh, the Colo and the Raven. Oh, Desi bought warp. Havoc is still at but one gats, so he most of his damage is actually from the charge. I think that's interesting. Looks like Pharaohs is backing yeah. up precautiously. Yeah, they don't. They they know what's coming. They don't want to be here. They 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 don't think they have a torp from the other team, but they know that the, you know he could have gotten it one, and they don't want to be here to find out. <laughs> Well, it looks like they're just going to go straight back to up. And hopefully the Raven Merce will get uh, radar on this one to give the team a little bit of vision. Yeah, I don't know. He's at like, 300 minerals, and he doesn't have 400 energy yet. So, I'm, I mean, honestly, it's really hard to decide in situations like this where you spend your money. I, I, I personally would probably, even at this point, still keep getting energy just because he has to get, you know, really more energy to consistently cast Imp. But that's not... Yeah, he got up to 400 energy. Here, let's did. see, if we go to Merce. Uh, still EMP. Oh, he went... But he did get radar. Three speed. Yeah. Wait, wait, did he? Yeah, how do you, there's no option for radar. <laughs> so I'm not no, sure if he I, has yeah, that or not. Yeah, you have to go to his perspective and look at the mini-map, but it's kind of hard to tell because most of the blue team is in the uh, is actually visible just check right it. now. But it looks like... So, yeah, um, he, it, it does look like he got radar. Yes. You can also Our go to global. upgrades, I suppose. Yes, um, yep, he does have radar. That's um, so both, that. yeah, both radars. I mean, <laughs> both ravens have radar. Mindy is kind of coming up, and there's four ships in this cloud. If they turn on yeah. him, this could be he pretty tight. He got guardian shields, but he doesn't have sh the shield recharge. The victim is not going toward him, it, but 
Helveta kind of is not when, getting his rockets on the right ship, but uh, yeah, that that could have been pretty tight. Yes, it, almost definitely. He's out of shields and he doesn't have shield regen, but again, he only has 275 en energy and window, so. Yeah. Hey, but his the problem is his farm is so low. If you look at the yeah. uh, the count, it's just not an even distribution. You get yeah, at least the, the side lane ships. Oh, there you go, boost, and it's a kill, almost. Oh, there you go. Oh, I need to turn the sound back on. It, it looks like havoc has gone down. The death is oh, going down. Oh yeah. He, he took him there to, oh, if they keep pushing, those rockets are going to do damage. Pharaohs are going in for a the massacre is, here. Yeah, they go. Better back out. Ooh. He is bleeding. Their Raven is bleeding. Nah, he'll make it. Ah, uh, Kanda almost could have turned there. If, if Kanda had turned, that would have been... I mean... It's so tempting, because that... That Arbiter is going to be going back so low. I don't know. I don't I don't think he could have safely turned, but then again, what is what is truly safe when you're down a ship? Havoc but was he's... pretty low farm, though, and so Blue Team is actually still up on farm at the moment, even though they're down a yeah. ship. Vaticano is doing a good job at farming, and so is Conda. The question is, uh, Conda is using acid spray to help him farm. His speed is at one seven, so I mean, it's and... obviously never good to lose a dread. But ultimately, their 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 late game capacities haven't fundamentally changed by losing the dread. Right? They still have their support. They still have their uh, damage dealing ship in the frigate. And they still have their overlords, so this is a situation that is messy. I, I want to say it, it favors uh, Pharaohs, but I don't think this game is over by a long shot. It's yeah, it's still pretty early in the game, and I'm thinking the uh, you know both colos have hardened shields. Both are getting up a little bit in speed. I'm just kind of wondering how much uh, push power they're going to have if they keep waiting. Now it's, it's just their colo just getting a little bit of love in the middle, but uh, Barrows is pretty spread out, so they're getting trying to. Looks like they're trying to share a little bit on farm. Belkis is trying to boost to get him a little bit of help. It's a question of where the farm is too. Merce is sitting at 183 farm, so even though they're up a support, the support doesn't have enough money to really invest in too many different spells quite yet. Ooh, working on the, the Ooh. Ooh, Oh, if, if the Leviathan goes Leviathan's down, this going is down. Out. It's down. It's it's game. That's game. The, and here's the thing. There's a new. There's a GG rule. So um, right now, Pharaohs has two kills. So if the other team GGs right, you know, puts the game. They get two points for the kill and then three points for the win, which is five. But however, with the GG rule effect to prevent teams from just farming denying points. Barrels would actually get nine points. They would get six points for every ship that's still alive, and then plus three points for the win. So, if they played it out, uh, you know, right now, or, or quit out the game, then uh, Salvo would only cough up just a handful of points. But if they GG'd, then it'd be nine. So at the max point anybody can get on the top game is twelve points for a win. So nine points for a GG is. It helps keep the spirit of competition up. So everyone doesn't just immediately leave. Yep, so if there's a team that you don't want to play, you can't deny them the opportunity to get points and win. You know what I mean? For example, say uh, a freelancer team which just had all studs, you know, and no one wants to play them. So you can't, you know, you can't have 10 teams go and GG them and they only collect 10 points for 10 games. Thus, you know, potentially being dead last because, you know, they didn't get any kills. So, uh, what ends up happening is that so with the GG rules, based on how many ships you have alive, that they didn't attempt to kill or whatever. Therefore, instead of getting just you know three points for the win, uh, now you're getting nine points. So it's trying to keep some level of balance. It's not a perfect system, but I think I at mean, least it's, it's, it's basically or it's pretty similar. I mean, it, it's always been better to just play it out, right? Because it's always been the case that if you could get a single kill, you would get more points. What is right. going on here? Can, is there any oh, chance they can actually get Vic guns? Nah. See, so the no, thing no, is he... that they're down two ships, but Prop Man still has a lot of damage and a side blast if he could actually get to a position that he could dump it on or anything. But they're not really giving him the chance to do that, so it looks like this will just continue to be a slowish destruction well, of the Salvo team. 
kind of curious to see, uh, you know, Propman didn't do any ups with farming. And if he keeps playing like this, he's actually going to get killed by Creep later on. Three shotting with his li lasers and then zero mutts. So, 20 minutes in, you'd think at least he should. Yeah. Uh, I would think it'd be one or two shot, don't you think? Nah, three shot on on energy blast. Uh, the energy blast is really efficient. So even though it's a uh, three shot, it effectively kind of acts like a two shot because it instantly acquires new targets as soon as the last target is dead. Whereas a lot of other ships will overkill because it keeps shooting. Uh, the uh, the energy blast on the Overlord is one of, it, it's limited on uh, range, but for targets that are in range, it's one of the most efficient farming weapons in the game. Slowly push in the middle. Ooh. Wow, if they could actually...